good day. One of the most important facts that face believers today is not just knowing the truth of God, but knowing the truth that sets us free. Not ideologies, philosophies, opinions, that in many instances are nothing more than distortions, non-truth about what is true. And I believe that is what Jude is seeking to wrap his mind around, this letter around, as relates to the people to whom it is addressed to. It is addressed to believers. It is addressed to people that, if I may use 20th century language, who go to church. Uh, I, 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 and I'm real aware that people go to church for several reasons. Not everybody go to church for the spiritual education that is available. And yet, be it as it may, we are all under the examination, if I can say it that way, of those that seek to distort the truth, to find someone or someone who are weak in the faith, weak in God's word, who don't know the truth to mislead. And it's always not from a mass perspective, but one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you today, that Satan knows whether you're bluffing about how much you know about the Bible. <laughs> Satan knows how strong or how weak you are when it comes to the word of God. And so my prayer is that as we have marched and marshaled through this text, that you have really, those of you who have traveled with us, and let me say thank you, that you have seen the seriousness of what this letter is all about, not just then, mm -hmm. but the relevancy and the realness of the matter, of the hour. The hour is late where we have to come to a sense of knowing that we need to know truth that will set us free. Mm -hmm. And to not know truth that could set us free could also lead to error that will lead to entrapment. Mm -hmm. Let me have a word of prayer with you quickly and let us move into our study today. Your word is a lamp under our feet, a light on our path. Yeah. Even now we pray mm -hmm. for illumination, for understanding, we pray, Father, that you will give understanding to your word that we can grow thereby. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the book of Jude, chapter 1, let me quickly just reconnect. If you are looking at verse number 17, you will see the three words, but you beloved. You see that? And he says... You ought to remember. You can't teach what you ain't been taught, and you can't talk about what you don't know. And because he says you need to remember, presupposes that they learned something. Uh, you can only do memory recall when you have had something to have memory to call up. If it ain't there, there ain't nothing to lean on. It's kind of like a bank account. Or a checking account. Oh yeah, you can go and write as many checks as you want. But if ain't no money in the bank, it is insufficient funds. I pray that that's not the indictment on any of us when it comes to God's word. That we would be labeled insufficient when it comes to knowing God's word. Um, to remember him is to serve as a defense for them. Because there are those that have infiltrated the church then with lies, untruths, false teaching that have led many of them astray. Same thing is going on now. They, 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 they're not showing up in our sanctuaries, but they are on our computer screens, on our smart devices, our phones. Uh, they're even on television programs. Um, 
every quote unquote religious program and every quote unquote preach on TV and on the computer and the internet is not necessarily telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And if you don't know it, you can believe a lie dressed up in a tuxedo and think you going to the ball and why are you doing the two-step, everybody else doing the cha-cha. Yes. The point I'm trying to make is simply this. And that is, is that we need to be very careful about making religious experiences to always be that which is biblically correct. And I'll get to this later. We looked at verse 20 and 21 of last week where he gave them some more words of exhortation and encouragement to tell them here are some things you need to be doing. Let me have your attention real quick. As much as I love to preach and teach, I can't live for the saints. It's not my responsibility. I can tell the saints about Joyce Meyer and T.D. Jakes and Cruffalo Dollar and that fella down there in, in, in Texas who's talking about you living your best life now. And, and, and I can forewarn you, don't waste your money buying lives while you help pay for folk living in gated communities and flying on airplanes. Amen. And sometimes uh, people think, well, you're being critical. Well, what would you, which would you prefer? that I watch you read poison and believe it and be misled or tell you the truth even when you may not like it. Y'all yeah, call them out. I'm not done calling them out because you need to understand that there are those that are putting money in their pockets, telling lies, peddling a false gospel yeah. and got folk believing stuff that is not biblically correct. It's not left up to your preacher to grow you. Set the table. You choose to not come and eat. That's your fault for starving spiritually. But understand, it is his responsibility. When he opens this, he needs to know what he's saying because he has spent the time studying, doing everything there is to extract, pull out, so that he can be able to present to you. And this is what Jude is saying. You've been around the truth long enough. When are you going to grow up and stand on what you know? Yeah. You, you've been taught. How long have you been going to church? By now. Ought to be able to have every person here, even you watching, Put my Bible in your hand and tell you to turn to me where you place your eternal hopes. Yeah. A lot of times it gets deadly quiet mm -hmm. when that is said. Yeah. Think about this. Why would you pay a security system every month to protect your house? Only when a break-in occurs, the phone don't work. And all they've done is take your money but provide no service. Yeah. How happy would you be then? How happy do you think the Lord is for us to say who we are in Him yeah. and we can't even defend it by the Word of God? It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been going to church. I'm asking you, how are you with Jesus doing? Yeah. Yeah. And how well are you in the word of God? Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at verse 22 and 23. And next week, we'll move into the doxological yeah. conclusion of this letter. This letter is a call to the reality that we're going to have to deal with false teachers. They ain't stop and they don't keep coming. And there's been in every generation since this time of Jude's letter 
There's been an unwillingness on the part of many who call themselves Christians to expose these people and to stop them at the borders of the church. I pity any pastor who has no idea in knowing what groups in the church are studying out of what book and what authors. It ain't about control. And I hear you, hear you thinking, oh, trying to, no, 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 no. Any good parent would not allow their child to go into an aisle where they know poison exists and allow them to play with it and then say nothing about it. Yeah. Any real pastor should not idly sit by and allow people to study and read stuff that they know is not advantageous yeah. to the growth and the spiritual health and well-being and development of those who he lead and feed. Um, Jesus says you know the truth truth sets you free let me catch up with you for those of you that are reading or hearing you can't know a truth that you aren't willing to study and learn if you're not willing to go to the church where you attend and be in prayer and Bible study can you explain to me and tell me why not why won't you come to Sunday school I know it gets quiet I hear crickets mm -hmm. And yet, are you setting yourself up long term yeah. to be lied to and be misled and think that what you see, because you were visiting somewhere, that this is the way it ought to be. Uh, and so Jude makes it clear that these false teachers have infiltrated and in many cases they have gained a foothold that they share, but have never been able to successfully gain. I pray that you are turning Jehovah's Witnesses away with a donation to get them out of your face. What you're only doing is helping them to buy more material and peddle more poison. Yeah. You ought to know the truth. You ought to be able to stand firm-footed when a Mormon should come to your door and want to talk to you about the Book of Mormon and coming to go study with them. Uh, these are times, you all, where we have to be very careful, even about who we study with. Um, everybody ain't biblically sound. Let, let me say this and I'm going to move on. To what advantage is it of you to study with someone out the Bible and they don't know no more than you? For years, for decades, even for centuries, to take, uh, terrorism has done a destructive work in our country and understand that there is acts of spiritual terrorism that happens even in the church because it's no different. The church cannot afford to be gullible, ill-advised, and it cannot be accepting and accommodating, and it cannot be all-embracing without suffering the destructive consequences that come with it. We just can't believe stuff because it sounds good. It has to be anchored in the Word of God, and so the message that Paul writes to Timothy and Titus rings louder now than ever before regarding the need to teach sound doctrine. Turn to 2 Timothy, that second letter that Paul writes to Timothy in chapter 1. Pastor Timothy, who is responsible to God for feeding the church of God in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 13. Retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and the love which are in Christ Jesus. Timothy is going to lead and shepherd people. He's got to teach right. He's got to instruct correctly. correctly and he's got to be sound doctrine in the book of Titus. Chapter 2, verse 1, which is right after 2 Timothy. Listen to what he says. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for what? And the pastor here, these two young men are pastors. They must be of sound teaching because they infect lives. People are going to remember 
more of what you say than what you do? What are they repeating regarding the sermons you, you preach? What are they repeating when it comes to that which you teach? Not just preacher. You Sunday school teacher? It just matters it's your turn and you need to get up and read something and then sit down. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I pray that ain't how you're looking at it. If that's the case, you might need to reconsider. When you open your mouth and you're in front of people, people are expecting you to know what you're talking about. You better hope that the folk in the pew are more prepared than you who stand up in front of them. Because they know when you're bluffing. And, 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 and Paul makes it clear in the book of Acts, before he leaves, he calls the elders of the church together and he says, listen, I need y'all to understand, and Paul is in tears, that when I leave, mm -hmm. that the church is not going to be without being attacked. Yeah. There are wolves, not, 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 not them four-legged creatures, yeah. but there are those that are in sheep clothing that are wolves on the inside that are seeking to devour and destroy the church. Don't think for a minute that there aren't some wolfish preachers. Yes. Don't think for a minute that there aren't some wolfish pastors. Yes. They ain't interested in telling the truth out of God's word. It's right here. Sound doctrine. Doctrine is a word that means teaching from God about God that directs us to the glory of God. Teaching, mm -hmm. learning, instructing, yeah. cutting it straight so that people will not fall prey to error. And even when they see things that could look miraculous, does not always mean that it is everything that they see. Yes. Uh, because right in the front of the word doctrine is the word sound. Not, you ain't teaching them false. There's enough folk already out there doing that. Yeah. We need some people who are going to teach doctrine that is sound, which means that it is biblically correct because it's founded or based on correct biblical interpretation, not human ideology. It ain't about how I feel about the verse. Uh, okay, but what does God have to say? Uh, doctrine teaches us to see God as the one from whom and through whom and to whom, whom all things exist and it directs our lives to God's glory. And when you get home, you can look at Romans chapter 11 verse uh, 36 and 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6. Um, been thinking about this um, as I look to anticipate doing a conference sometime next year. And, and this statement is very important because it lines up with this. That our convictions of God's word, the Bible, mm -hmm. must always yeah. be grounded in, mm -hmm. governed by a correct interpretation of scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me say that one more time. Mm -hmm. This ain't just about being a preacher or a teacher. It's about being a biblically sound Christian. That your convictions, what you believe about God's word, must not every now and then, but it must always be grounded in and governed by a correct interpretation of scripture. And a correct interpretation of scripture is not that which is denominational based. It's Bible. There, there, there are a lot of churches denominationally have different views and different practices, um, uh, different beliefs. But when it's all said and done, whatever your practice and your belief is, you ought to be able to sustain it by the word of God. If it's not, you could easily have traditions that are outside the text. 
How much of that does God get glory out of? You know, we're living in a day where so many of our churches are doing so much stuff, calling folks stuff that they ain't. Okay, it doesn't got quiet. Um, th there are no apostles, y'all. Um, and, and I'm seeing almost, uh, almost, 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 so many folk are now becoming self-appointed apostles, self-appointed bishops. Okay. Um, um, yeah. 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 I'm trying to be nice about this, but I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I cannot let some stuff just be. Um, I, I'm seeing trends now where there are churches that are calling women elders. And I ain't found a text yet. Yeah, amen. Hold y'all head up. Yeah. Um, I, I have no control over what somebody else do, but I, I do have a right to call it out. Yeah, amen. If it ain't in the book. Yeah. Uh, me, 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 many of us, you know, we, 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 we go some places and we sit under some church worships and we see some stuff. Mm -hmm. And we hear some people that are in places that's not biblically ordained for them to be in. Um, ain't about a denomination being a Baptist. I, I'm a Christian first. And, and if God doesn't approve it, then why would I peddle it? If God's word does not sustain it or support it, why should I practice it? A lot of times we want to take certain texts and we don't even take... We don't even stop to think through. Here's one that came to mind. I was thinking earlier today how to soften this. Jesus said, if an eye offended you, pluck it out, for it's better for you to go to glory with one eye than with both of the messed up. If your right hand offend you, cut it off. If that were to be taken literal, we'd have some one-eyed, one-handed Christians on their way to heaven. Is that literal or figure? If you don't know how to study Remember the, in the book of Acts, uh, Ethiopian eunuch uh, just left church, had a scroll, we call it a Bible, that's what it is. Uh, he's sitting there, he just left church, uh, sitting there in his chariot reading, just left church, reading his Bible. Holy Spirit says, Philip, that way, uh, do you know what you're reading? He says, how can I know? Let me ask you this. Who you listen to more than your pastor? Yeah. Oh, it got quiet. I heard yeah. two credits. Yeah. Who do you even use to ask, is he teaching and telling and preaching to us the truth? Yeah. And you're using somebody else as a measuring rhyme. You don't even know what they believe. understand yeah. that our convictions of scripture ain't on a hunch. Yeah. It ain't on a this is how I feel. No. Let me even go into enlarge and say please don't lie on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Stop, stop talking about the Spirit told you this about a verse. <laughs> uh, if you don't understand context, content, culture, historical and, 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 and theological uh, understanding of the text. Do you honestly think the Holy Spirit is going to tell you something about a text that ain't true if it ain't already in the text? Because if that's the case, somebody lying and it ain't him. Yes, well, this is what it means to me. No, please pump the brakes on that. What did it mean to the author? Yeah. Because it didn't change. When it came to me and you. God is immutable. Means he ain't going to change. And if God ain't going to change. Then his word ain't going to change. 
from everlasting to everlasting, he is who he is, and his word is. I, I, I ain't seen no Bible yet that, that's got a corrected edition. Ain't gonna find one because there is not one. And so the pastors who are who are commissioned by God to lead the people of God in freedom. Jesus made very sure yeah. that he know what he's talking about. Yeah. So when we look at verse 22 and verse 23 today, yeah. it's important that we hear what Jude is saying to the saints then. And how do we understand that even today? Because he actually picks up from where we were on last week. Let me read right into it, beginning in verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God and waiting patiently for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. We looked at that last week. Today, he picks up and have mercy on some who are doubting. Yeah. Stop right there. Important to know what are you talking about, Jude? And why are you saying what you're saying? Because this verse emphasizes a distinction between those who sincerely doubt as opposed to those who are rebellious and arrogant. And he identifies these as scoffers who are not really seeking the truth, what we saw in verse number 10. Well, look at verse number 10. Because he mentioned them. He called them out. Look at what he says. But these men revile the things which they do not understand. And the things which they know by instinct like unreasoning animals. By these things they are destroyed. Uh, what, what a way to describe somebody. But, but what a word of warning. To also say you need to be careful of sitting up under that. You need to be very careful of embracing that and believing that. No matter how well they, 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 they make it sound good and no matter how, how, how wonderful it may come across, a lie is a lie is a lie. I don't care what wrapping paper you use or what color bow you put it on. This is what Jude is saying to them. Uh, it's important that the, the key attitude that he presents here is mercy, a caring compassion, rather than rejection. Uh, let me go back up because I just kind of jumped over some things. Thank y'all for, for, for being so kind and not telling on me. Th this was a key danger that Jude presents by that the presence of these false teachers was like a hidden reef among the members of the church. He talked about that in verse 12. Hidden reefs, let me have your attention, are not that which are visible above the water because you know how it's still around it. Right. One of the things that sunk the Titanic in which they said it was unsinkable is that it hit an iceberg that was so far below that they couldn't see it. And when they hit it, lost lives. How many people have become victims to reefs, yeah. hidden reefs. Yeah. Didn't see it, didn't know, but embraced it and believed it and have been holding on to that which is not true. Yeah. I think it's important that we, we really take a look at what's going on here and what he is saying. Because, look at verse 22 again. Because this is very critical. And have mercy on some who are doubting. He didn't say throw them away. He says that you ought to have a caring compassion. Rather than to reject, you ought to have a heart to be open to people who are being misled by, uh, this is what he's talking about. Because they're in between two positions. They're being tossed here to know whether, they don't know whether they stand here or whether they stand here. And, 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 
And, and if you don't handle them well, okay, then I, I asked this question. I just almost gave an answer. I had to catch myself. Why is it important how people who are in error are handled? There's one, one leading response that's above all of them. And I know y'all got a bunch of them. Um, why, why, why do you think why do you think he, he speaks this way he didn't put him on the right course true for sure he want him on the right course that, 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 that's true but there, there's something a little bit deeper thank, thank you brother Davis there, there's something a lot deeper you want me to tell you they don't legitimately know what's that they don't legitimately know the truth because people sit under the gospel Sunday after Sunday does not mean they take it serious. There are some people that ain't going to church to grow. Some of them are going to be entertained. Yeah. Okay. I know of a church. I won't call the name of it. Years ago, depending on what Sunday of the month it was and what choir was singing, you can determine the size of the number of saints in the house based on the folk that were in the choir stand singing. And if their favorite choir wasn't singing, they weren't showing up. Hello, I ain't lying, I'm telling the truth. You know what that's really saying? We ain't come, we, we, the gospel, we ain't interested in the gospel. We want somebody to, to, get, to, to feed our, our, our emotions, yeah. make us feel good, make us cry, make us shout, make us spit, squall, and scream. Yeah. Well, what about that which is eternal? Yeah. What about that which is going to, to lead you to growth and to become more like Jesus? You, you know, the more I live, the more I see how many of our churches are emptying out because folk don't want to know, they don't want to grow, they don't want to learn. They just want to come and be made to feel good. Yeah. So they show up at certain times when certain things are happening. I've even seen some leave when they're done getting their fix on. Oh, okay, I'm just telling you the truth. Let, let, me, let me ask him a question. Thank you, but David Swartz said, but more. Here's what's, what drives this. Right behind that word, why, I want you to write the word souls, S-O-U-L-S. That, that's, that, if, there, if, there, if there's nothing else, when it comes to being concerned about people that are in hell, that's still a soul. That, that, that's still somebody who needs to know what the word of God says correctly. That there are a lot of folk that, that look, can I just, can I say this without y'all getting mad at me? Y'all are real risky. That there are some people that are not spiritually mature enough to go visit other church worship. They, they, they're too impressionable. Um, y'all stay home sometime. <laughs> oh, we got quiet. Y'all yeah. learn how to stay home and to help, help us where we at. Right. Yeah. Instead of being all over the place and we don't know you until we see you. Okay. Right. I, I've been in some worship settings and I've seen some stuff. And I said, I can only imagine what God must be thinking right about now. I can only imagine what kind of expression must be on his face. I, I hear certain lyrics of music and, and the rhythmic beat and the music have gotten folk in such a spiritual euphoric uproar. They could have been talking about their mom and they still just been 
Don't you hear what they saying? We going back to eating on top of the world. We ain't going back to eating. No, we're not. That there are a lot of these folks that are that, that are making millions selling. Oh my God. Taking Bible verses out of context and, and creating songs out of them. And people are sitting there being spiritually entertained and have no idea that ain't, uh-uh. Yeah. You know, some years ago, we used to sing some songs too. Shake, shake, shake the devil off. Are you serious? Yeah. When you know better, you ought to do better. Yeah. Your hymnology ought to match your theology. Yeah. If what you're singing about that there's no biblical con, you know, connection to it, please don't read the lesson. Yeah. What you singing it for? Save a seat for you? Where? At the stadium? At Hardy? In the house? What, what seat are you waiting for somebody to save you for in glory? You need to read. They're already preoccupied. You say, you offer rough. No, no, I, look, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you. The church is at a critical place where sound doctrine is so needed now than ever before. Uh, but where we used to hear grandma and them talking about, you know, the Lord coming back soon. Uh, we still saying that. He ain't showed up yet. Thank you, Lord. A whole lot of folk are in trouble right now and don't know it. The fact of the matter is, we got to make sure that if we're going to grow the saints, yeah. that we aren't using spiritual steroids, yeah. that we aren't using, using artificial substitutes yeah. and fattening folk for what? Yeah. Souls are important to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And it ought to be important to you that people in your family are saved today. Yeah, yeah. Believers that are strong in the word of God have an excellent opportunity to counteract those that have been misled by false teaching. Let me move on. Y'all ready to go home. As in the case of Jude, his admonition here is to lovingly and faithfully help those who have been victims of these scoffers to help steer them to the truth. And we still have to do the same thing. Yeah. I don't have to like the lifestyle of homosexuals. I can still love them, yeah. but I'm not going to divert the truth yeah. just because, yeah. but I can tell them what Jesus is able to save them from. Yeah. Hello, come on. Yes. Uh, there are three imperatives and commands that you give first. Convince some who doubt. Yeah. And some believers will call between those who proclaim the truth and those who twist it. Ain't this going on now? Hello, y'all? And with such people who are wavering in the faith, wavering in the word of God because of deception, and many of them, you know, they're victims. I, 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 I feel bad for many who are led, who are misled, and who are confused. I really do. But I even... Hold the church accountable for misleading folk and know better and don't do better. Somebody's going to be held accountable for this. Not just the preacher, but what about the folk in the pew? What about the Sunday school teacher? What about other folk in ministry? These are souls. And we've got to make sure we tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And with such people are wavering in the faith again because they've been lied to and didn't even know it and misled and didn't even know it. Contending for the faith means pers persuading people who are doubting of the wrong, the right way and refuting the wrong way. We, we got to help them to understand that, okay, here's what the word of God says, honey. Brother, here's what the word of God says. 
We ain't here to argue it. Yeah. We're here to defend it. Mm -hmm. To do it in love. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, what 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 one of the largest statements that drove a whole lot of us, the old those of us that are over, that that one them two numbers, uh, you know, we we got scared in in, in the going to church. You know, if you die, you going to hell. What is that like? It's fire and it don't ever go out. What? For real? Yeah. We living in a day where folk ain't scared of hell. No. <laughs> yeah. They tell you, uh, excuse me. Um, they they live <laughs> in such ways. They don't. They they ain't scared of dying. They ain't scared of eternal consequences. You can't scare folk into coming to Jesus. And if you scare them into coming, you got to scare them to keep them in Jesus. But if you teach them the right way, and this may mean long hours of patient instruction, amen. Prayerful interaction, amen. Can I tell you this? This is well beyond the Sunday morning experience. Y'all let me know when you're ready. Do you care about lost people? I, I hear you say, yeah. Well, how are you, what are you doing to help the church grow to bring lost folk in? If it was good enough for you to be a member, how come it ain't good enough for somebody else? Yeah. Oh, okay, y'all got quiet. If Jesus was good enough to save you, uh, what are you doing to get the gospel out? Yeah. Are, are you, can you be labeled guilty by God of gossiping the gospel today? Do you know enough gospel to win somebody to Jesus? Yeah. When was the last time you heard error and were able to compassionately, biblically correct it? Patient instruction. It, it ain't a one and done. Amen. Amen. So I, you know, I got some folks in my family. I'm still waiting on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I ain't the only one got oh, no. got folk on their way to hell in my family. Yeah. I only, oh, 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 the rest of y'all, the rest of y'all good. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, the rest of y'all, oh, the rest of y'all, everybody else in your family, right now, you say, oh, all of them, they good. You know, I'm sorry about yours, but us is good. We straight, we fine. Oh, uh, wonderful. But that ain't everybody. And, and it, it ain't a matter of running it down their throat. As much as it is being prepared, to give an answer for the hope that lies in you. Folks are patient with you. Hello? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this since we're just talking. <clears throat> How long did Jesus have to wait on you? Yeah. Before you really Amen. came to him. Amen. I didn't say go to church. Because the difference between going to church and going to Jesus. Yeah. Is he still waiting on us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. He's still waiting. Yeah. And I'm so glad he ain't said to none of us in here. You know what? Doggone it. You know, been waiting on you for 20 years. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, no, he's still waiting. Yeah. Your family member is worth waiting on and sharing the gospel. He said, oh, they, they, you ain't nobody going to get through to them. But somebody got through to you. Thank you. And you was probably about as hard-headed as they are. Yeah. Thank God that you saw the light and wasn't Carol Ann walking up in there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hello, y'all. Yeah. Um, Jude is saying to the people here that you got to have ongoing dialogue with them mm -hmm. to have correct biblical, theological, and historical facts of scripture as they really are. 
No, I didn't say you had to become some, some walking encyclopedia, but you ought to know what you're talking about when you open your mouth and you're going to talk about this. Amen. It's going to require prayer. Yes. You need to be led of the Lord. Lord, help me to say it right. Yes. Help me to, say, to speak to them correctly, yes. not in a condemning way. No. Help me to study your word even if it ain't but one day out the week. Yeah, yeah. Help me to make time for you. Yeah. You make time for me every day. Why don't I make time for you? And, and so while this may not come easy, and there are no easy victories, hear me when I tell you that whenever you or I seek to try to share the gospel and to show someone through the word of God what God's word says, Satan is actively busy. Amen. Yeah. There's warfare that goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, but anytime you're going to try to share with someone, yeah. you know why they keep arguing with you, Rachel? Because Satan continues to do all he can to discourage you to keep you from trying to encourage someone else. Okay. Rachel, can I? Is it Rochelle or Rachel? Okay. Miss Rochelle, Rachel. Oh, better still, Miss Reed. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give over. For the rest of us that are here, even for you. Can, can I tell you, and I think I have somebody who will holler back at me. The hardest group of people or persons to try to talk to about the Lord are folk in your family. Yes, sir. Oh, I, hello. I thought yes, I heard somebody start clapping. Yes, you know, the one thing they want to start doing, somebody help me. They'll start bombing it on you. You know, I knew when I was six years old, and you hit me in the head with a tipsy roll. I ain't forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, talking about stuff that don't matter. The hardest people to deal with trying to help to get to know the Lord are the folk who know your faults. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Brother Davis. I appreciate you hollering out. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah, well, they don't know you like I do. And you know what? You're right. And they don't know us like Jesus do either, do they? Okay, let's put an end to that argument. You still got to give it the best you got. Yes. I'm talking to some people right now, probably those of you who got, got some children. You say you raised up in church. You know, you brought them to the building. Yes. Uh, but did you bring them to Jesus? Two different things. Yeah. Uh, Book of Deuteronomy, ain't the, 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 the law of God required the parents that you put the word over the doorpost and the limb. Uh, it ought to be a house that not only promotes the word, it's covered by the word. And not just on the outside. Hey, Bert, can I finish telling them? Thank you so much. When they lay down at night, talk to them about the law, the word of God. When they get up in the morning, talk to them about the word of God. And then when they walk along the way, is, is that could 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 some of us have lost some of our children because we didn't fulfill the biblical assignment? We just left it to Sunday morning and expected the church to do all of the work when we negated and we ignored our responsibility as parents. All got quiet. And then when they done left the house, going off to school and going out in the world and then got crazy. Yeah. Did we do our job first? Train up a child away, she go. Yeah. When they get old, won't part from it. Some of us are living proof that if we've got it in us, we can't stay away from it forever. Yeah. 
That's why y'all up in here in the Bible study. That's why you watch it. Yeah. You, you know we're not doing some crazy stuff just like the rest of us. But we made it back, and thank God we made it back alive. Yeah. No, it ain't going to be easy. Yeah. Don't expect it to be. Yeah. Expect the unexpected. Yeah. But remember what he said, yeah. that I'm with you. Bottom line is, it's not enough to show them where it's in the Bible. Yeah. You need to know what it means, and then you need to be living proof of it. And then verse number 23, and we'll soon be out of here. And one of the reasons why you need the, trans the translation, because our Bible is a transliteration, is I wanted you to see what does that text say in the original language? And how do we get a fuller understanding and appreciation for it? Because it says, verse 22 in the original language, and on some, on the one hand, be showing mercy on those who are in doubt. Yeah. I'm so glad that I had a mom and a daddy that didn't give up on me. Yeah. I'm thankful for Mr. Daddy Robinson, who's been, been with Jesus a long time, taught me in Sunday school. Thank God for Miss for Pastor Katie Rogers. Taught me about Jesus. Yeah. Thankful for pastors who, over the course of years, even when I vacillated, they were able to bring me back because they cared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 23, and we'll be done. Pray this has been of help to you today. Yeah. Save others. Wow. What a responsibility. Let me stop right there and ask you this question. If you died today, would there be anybody on record that you could anticipate either seeing when you get there, you waiting on them to get there when after you'd have got there because you have spent some time sharing the good news? said a whole lot, did I? Yes, sir, you did. Your salvation cycle comes full circle. Yeah. When you who are saved can help somebody come to know Jesus. Yes, Amen. Amen. Everybody ought to be a good news teller. Soul winner. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I'm shy. Uh, do you ever get on the phone and talk? Yeah. Well, yeah. Try talking to them about Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> he said, save some. Hmm. And the saving others is not we delivering them from sin. No. But it is you and I making a concerted effort to try to win those who are in error yeah. to come to a light of understanding God's word. Some who are doubting, save others, snatch them out of the fire, mm -hmm. and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Sometimes, man, it, it, it ain't easy extrapolating the scripture. Second, in this verse, Jude urges the readers to snatch out of the fire unbelievers who are seriously and unsafely close to entering eternal punishment. Mm -hmm. Let's stop for a second and look at that. Is that critical? Very. Yeah! Mm -hmm. Now read the lesson, please. Let me have your attention. Don't read. After death, the judgment. Yeah. I share with people at funerals, uh, as the Lord lead, the Jesus who will save you the day after death is going to be the one judging. Yeah, I pray it goes well. Yeah. The Jesus who will justify you before death yeah. is the same Jesus who will judge you yeah. after. Mm -hmm. ain't, no, ain't, ain't no hook up and holler at after death. No, 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 uh -uh. no, no. 
All of us will stand before him. And there is a record kept on every one of us. Hello. Some will stand before the great white throne. And that's the judgment that none of us in here want to be in. You don't want to be in that line, I'm telling you. You know, they used to say, come out, come out wherever you are. You want to come out of that one. Because that's the line of damnation and doom. But then the judgment seat of Christ, we know that's the Bema seat. Where we who are saved, where reward is given by the Lord himself for service. We're living in a day, y'all, where we have an opportunity to share the word of God. And it acts like an agent that snatches them out of the fire of damnation and delivers them into salvation. There are scholars that see this as a parallel to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 23. And the kind of person mentioned here is not a doubter who is considering leaving the faith, but a person who would listen to this, who has already slid well into de deception. They are in danger. They need to get out. Because the longer they stay in, the worse is going to become. The good news is that there's still time to rescue them, but you can't wait. The Jew says, here's a chance to win them back, and it must be done out of love. Wow. Key point made in this letter is the danger posed by false teachers. Not only do these people place themselves in danger of eternal judgment, uh, punishment, as he shares in verse 13, they can also disrupt the faith of others. If you don't know, you can be misled in seconds. For those who are not in open of rebellion, but are merely confused or suffering from doubt, our response should be, guess what? Mercy. They need help. They need help. Amen. We need to seek their redemption, not their condemnation. Yeah. 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 How would you want them to speak to you yeah. if it were you on the other side of that table? Hello? Yeah. Many of them, pretty much, are, are clueless as it relates to what well, well, I didn't know. Well, well let me help you. Yeah. And then, third, Jew portrays some unbelievers as so contaminated by immorality that this compassion needs to come with some caution, not excuse. You're living in sin, need you to know you need to get out of the house on fire. Hello? Uh, it's commendable to reach grossly immoral unbelievers, but it is unacceptable to be drawn into their immorality. Do y'all hear what's being said? You don't compliment folk living in sin. That's what, you know. No, you don't tell them to stay in it. They need to come out. Y'all off for quiet. Y'all do, do, do y'all believe that? Oh yeah. Yes. It, it might we see it in our families. Come on. Yeah. And our families. Uh, many, many of them are the most difficult for well, well, I expect mama to talk like this. Yes. Yeah, here, here come here come Uncle here come Uncle James. I know he, you know, first thing he's gonna light up, he's gonna light light me up. Yeah. No, got it all wrong. I'm saying what I'm saying because I love you. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying what I'm saying because you need you need the Lord in your life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How's this going to end up for you? You should at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. You put a ring on her finger. Why, 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 why don't, how come she ain't good enough to marry, but she's good enough to sleep with? Yeah. Excuse me? Something wrong with that. And that, okay, y'all, look, I live in the real world because I see it on a regular basis. Because there are people 
who, 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 are, who are masking and playing and perpetrating the fraud yeah. and stalling. Okay? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And continuing to give credence to sin. No, we, we, it don't matter who in your family is living that way. It ain't a matter well I support them. You know, I can love you, but I ain't got to support that. Okay? This is what he, oh, okay. See, he, here's where you got to decide today. Are you going to condone sin and compliment it? Or are you going to stand firm against it, but I still love you and I got compassion? But my having compassion don't mean I'm going to say I, I, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. This is what he is saying. Because there are a whole lot of folk that are being pulled in yeah. to circles and to beliefs and marches and rainbow colors and a whole bunch of other stuff. They talk about leaving them alone. What, what do you mean? The Holy Spirit didn't leave me alone. He didn't control, condone my sin. How's he going to condone other folk? Yes. 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 Preacher, you can talk about anything you want. Just don't talk about sin. Yeah. Amen. Talk about heaven and all that other stuff, but don't, don't, don't talk about change. Yeah. Well, while there are dangers and there are concerns in going after those who have been swallowed up by sin. Mm -hmm. There's a call in this text to make a distinction between the garment polluted by flesh and the person wearing the garment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here's another parallel to Zechariah chapter 3 where the high priest sin stained garments are removed and guess what? He gets to get put on. Don't you think that happened to me and you? Yes. He took on our sin. He who knew no sin became sin. Yes. That we may have his righteousness. Yes. Talk about a great exchange. Yes. If he did that for me and you, yeah. is he not waiting to do that for people you know and love? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The imagery here points to the cleansing that comes from repentance. When God saves a person from destruction and bestows forgiveness and righteousness. Thank you, Father, for, for, for giving me the chance and the time. Hello. Uh, uh, I, I think if, if the Lord were to admit all of us last night on the side of the bed and ask, do you want to wake up in the morning? We'd have said, oh, yes, Lord. I got some living I still want to do. I do. There's some things I want to get done. There are some places I'd like to see. Hello. Okay. You know, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I ain't homesick. Uh, and if he gives me a chance to live, do I not want others to have a chance to live? He does not want anybody to come into judgment, but to come to repentance. And so Jesus reached out with the message of forgiveness even to the most sinful members of society. But he did not participate in their sin and he didn't approve it. The lady who was called in adultery brought to Jesus. What you gonna do with her? Here's what the law said. Jesus said, you without sin, go ahead and rob her. Mm -hmm. Then he went on the ground and folks started leaving. Yeah. He left the woman with himself alone. He says, who condemns you? Yeah. She's in the face of God and in his company. Who condemns you? Yeah. Think about who's talking to her. Yeah. Listen to what he's saying. But then listen to what he leaves him with. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. Sin no more. Yeah. Get out that lifestyle, girl. Mm -hmm. Lead them sinful habits alone. I didn't save you to condone. I saved you 
to get rid of it. Yeah. Thank God today yeah. for another chance yeah, yes, and another chance yeah. and another chance yeah. and another chance. Yeah. You know, I don't know what folks, what they meant when they're talking about, you know, second chance, man, shit. I can't even date when I read when I used up my second one. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm so glad that yeah yeah. Any any questions? Any any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Have you been helped today? Oh yes. We'll look at this 23rd and 24th verse. I'm sorry, 24th and 25th verse next week. <clears throat> Move through this doxological statement, and I pray to God that you've been helped. I pray that you've been helped. Pray that you've been challenged. Even if you dealt with conviction where it leads to conversion. Through the mercy and the grace and the love of God. The Bible says he does not want anybody to be lost. But that all would come to repentance. Yes. Amen. Repentance ain't turning around. It's a matter of going in another direction. Leaving where you are to go where he is. Yes. If you need to know how you can become a Christian today. You are down. 330-369-1290. I'll be glad to walk you through the word of God to help you to have the assurance of your salvation. And then once you who are saved, my prayer is that you would share the gospel with someone else. Encourage somebody that you know is living a way that is not pleasing to the Lord. Pray and ask the Lord to open their eyes to see. Pray that the Lord will give you more patience and compassion not to put up with but to love people because he loved you as well. Thank you Lord for this time together. Pray that somebody come to know Jesus as, we, as a result of this lesson. Thank you for the saints of God. Thank you Lord. Thank you God for helping us to stand in truth, stand on truth that will set us free. We ask it all in his authority. Amen. Amen. Amen.